Hello and welcome to Keep Hope Alive. We're so happy to have you on today. Today we have a special guest here and she is fabulous. You guys are gone to love her. But before I even get started, guys, we are celebrating our third season. So this is very special. It went by very quick. We have amazing guest speakers that have been on Keep Hope Alive and now Party Time Texas podcast too. And with all this great response, we just keep growing and growing. And it's so rewarding to get the message out to everybody in the world about keeping hope alive and learning new things. So it's really good. So um, as we are going into this, I want you to remember with every show that I do, you can call if you have any questions for our speakers or just want to share a story with us. We'll share it on our show. We'll have a special segment and I can have Dr. Joy Vaughn answer some of the questions if you have them for her. But that uh, phone number that we have by lifeonrecord.com is 833-780-HOPE. So once again, it's 833-780-HOPE. So as we, before we jump into there, Life on Record is our sponsor. So Dr. Joy, do you know what Life on Record is? No, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Life on Record is your unique way of doing a guest book at any of your events. And usually we think of guest books. They're usually at weddings and stuff, but they can be used for many different things. But this is in the form of a vintage rotary bone, which is really cool. So when you're going into the event, there may be a picture frame or a little stand with a QR code or the vintage phone itself. But you can pick up during or after and it's good for a year. That's the best thing. And you can be like either two minutes, congrats, be happy, we love you. Or you can make it 30 minutes long, congrats, be happy. I hope you know what you're doing in life and I hope you have a great life and this is marriage and this is what you have to do. You know, people will go into detail, you know, but you can talk 30 minutes to an hour on this thing. So with their plans, um, the other thing, they only start at $99. And what they do with all these messages, they can burn it on a 12 inch vinyl record, or they have this cute little box that they can put it in. So you can go back and listen to it. Now, I know I'm talking about weddings and everything, but we used to just recently for one of our kiddos on the football team who got hurt and was sent to the hospital, all the boys called in, we hope you feel better. And it was just really good encouragement. So what whatever event it is, this is a great product to have. You can find them at www lifeonrecord.com and it's good for a year prices start at $99 so today I wanted to introduce Dr. Joy Vaughn and kind of tell you about her really quick so hey we're here to have fun and talk there may be a blooper here and there you know if I don't know how to say a word I'm gonna be asking the doctor how to say the word <laughs> So Dr. Joy Vaughn is a passionate reinvention and resilience specialist who focuses on shifting mindsets one neuron at a time. She is a native of Barbados and a graduate of Columbia and Nova Universities. She is a well-known personal development, neurocognitive and emotional intelligence practitioner. Dr. Joy has helped many individuals and companies increase their employees' performance and bottom line. Her groundbreaking research assisted college freshmen in shifting their brain pat patterns. I'm going to talk about that more too. And <laughs> graduating from college. Dr. Vaughn is the author of A Powerful People, Powerful Lives for Teens and Young Adults, the Seven Step Empowerment Series for the Secular and Christian Souls, and co-author of the best-selling Expert World Leaders, Volume 2, and The Art of Resilience, Phoenix Rising. She is the brainchild of the International Business Resilience Summit, which brings businesses from around the world together 
for a conversation on the importance of being resilient. What can I say? You are just brilliant. So I want to welcome Dr. Vaughn here as Dr. Joy coaching. Dr. So, Joy. Yay. so welcome to Keep Hope Alive. We would love to learn more about you. So tell us about yourself. Thank you, Nadine, uh, for that lovely introduction. Um, <laughs> so as I said, I was born in Barbados and I came here when I was about uh, 16, right three years after my mom passed. So it was a new um, life for my dad and myself. Mm-hmm. And we ended up at the United Nations, of all places. Mm-hmm. Lives kind of took off from there. But we were in the middle of the civil rights movement. Um, the Kennedy brothers had just passed. Uh, Martin Luther King had just passed. So it was a very interesting time to come to the United States. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, cool. and and But at the same time, as devastating as all of that was, it was something new, energizing, and and awesome happening, like kind of a groundswell of a new paradigm shift for mm-hmm. the country. And so to be in the middle of that at, this, at that time was just, you know, amazing. That's cool. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. So you've just, have you gone anywhere else in the world besides over there? Well, funny you should ask. <laughs> Uh, right after I graduated with my doctorate, I, I had thought the doors would open up to me, but I was keeping hope alive, right? Like, yes, yes it's <laughs> going to be fabulous joy. They're going to welcome you with open arms and you'll be able to do your research and help lots of college freshmen graduate from college because your research was so groundbreaking. Not... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. So I said, okay, what am I going to do? So Jimmy, I'm such an adventurer, right? I'm mm. going to reward myself. Okay. And part of keeping hope alive is learning how to reward yourself, right? Because uh-huh. that's how you learn to live in hope, I would yep. say. And so I packed three suitcases and I went around the world. Okay, cool. Yeah. I started in uh, Fiji. And, oh, I want to go there so oh, bad. It's so great. Oh. Uh, the people are really, really awesome. Um, and ended up in Portugal. Okay. But along the way, I said to myself, huh, what did it really take for me to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. And it took pivoting. It took not accepting failure. It took chutzpah, if the, you know. Yeah. It's, it took courage, tremendous amount of courage, because I have, uh, I've been diagnosed with wound arthritis. It just doesn't have me, right? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and I'm pain free now. So, me and my three suitcases yay. went around the world. And uh, I said, I wonder if there were more resilient women. I really was looking for resilient women out mm-hmm. there that I could actually have a conversation with about how did they become resilient? Like, what? As leaders, like, what did it take for them? And I found my first leader, two, one of two female leaders in Fiji, in the Waka village. Now, there are only two female leaders. Everybody is male. Well, no, why don't you want to, why don't you interview the male? Because of very male sounds it. No, no one knew that. And she was lovely. You know how you look at someone mm-hmm. and then look at and like, gosh, I know you. Like, I really know you. And we just started to cry. Because, like, Aww. we knew each other. Yeah. And then from there, it was Fiji and Australia and New Zealand and uh, London and Dubai. And... Dubai. You see, I only get to see those places on my soap opera. It's <laughs> <laughs> bold and beautiful when they're going to Dubai. I'm like, ooh, I want to go there. But I'm a yeah. photographer, too. So I'm, like, oh, making my God. bucket list as I'm getting older. I need to go here, there, 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 there. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, the most fascinating place was Egypt. Egypt. Was Egypt. Okay, interesting. And uh, also um, Switzerland. Was okay. Austria, all those places in Europe, right? France. I gotta start traveling more, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, it was 2019, just before the pandemic, so it was a little bit easier to do. Yeah. But now, um, you know, it's a little bit more challenging with COVID still kind of moving. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. I highly recommend, highly recommend that people travel. You get to see a complete new perspective. Yeah. I, yeah. Right. And it really opens up knowledge. I mean, for your taking in. I mean, for me, when I would go to Virginia with my family on road trips and we're going through Arkansas and Tennessee and then getting there, but it was something about Virginia going up the mountains and everything. I just was like, it's beautiful. It's nature. It's what, for me, God definitely created this and I'm taking it in and it's just, it's beautiful. It helps your soul and everything. So to be able to go out and travel and see the world in these different places just helps the soul. So absolutely. And you get to see that the news is not always right. Yeah, definitely. People yeah. Are genuinely, genuinely very nice. Mm -hmm. And welcoming. At least that was my experience. Yes. Yes. As long as you don't um violate their culture. Yes. They will embrace you. Mm -hmm. wow. and I can't do that enough. You you can't go there and think that it should be like how your culture is. No, every culture is different. Very yeah. different. Yeah. So I was just watching a movie. It's not a cultural movie, but it was just the other day. And <laughs> just seeing how the shifting of cultures is, and you have to try to adapt to that culture it's very important that there's also a respect in doing that. So yeah, definitely got to see that side of it. And, you know, thank God for movies because, you know, or even Babel, I'll bring Babel into this too, that learn the different languages. And I don't know for me, I'm just like, I'll listen to it and go, okay, I'm going to learn how to speak Spanish. And it was like, say this whole sentence. I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I just, I could not do it, <laughs> but I can watch Dora the Explorer with my daughter when she was younger and learn all the Spanish words, well, colors, you know, <laughs> yeah, so um, definitely with your books, okay, that you've done, I mean, you've been going, you went to these college universities and teaching, Um, it's a brain pattern thing, right? It so, is. Yeah, I want to learn a little bit more about that from you. Yeah, so particularly with um, teenagers leaving home, um, moving into college, sometimes they're not mature enough to handle mm -hmm. it on their own. And there was a program, a transformational program that came to the college that I was working at. And they were having such tremendous success. Mm -hmm. with college students graduated from college, but they couldn't, they knew they were doing it. The success mm -hmm. track over several years. So they had a track record. Um, they were backed by the Gates Foundation and so forth. So, you know, it was a very reputable program. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't figure out what was it that was happening in the brain that would have them actually shift um, and then be able to motivate themselves to move forward. And so let me share a little bit about that. Okay. There are two kinds of people in this world. The people who um, are intrinsically motivated, like they'll say, I can, I must, I will. And they mm -hmm. can generate themselves on an independent response. These are the go getters, the type A personalities, you know, the, the you know, the people named these are children who grew up in homes that say, Yeah, go for it. You can do anything, you can be anything. Those kinds of nature nurture kind of conversations, they were always surrounded there. So they learned to be, to motivate from inside out. Other people may not have had that experience and rely on people to motivate them, to tell them what to do. They may be more passive, aggressive. They may be, you know, um, unsure of themselves, mm -hmm. sure. And so they rely on other people to tell them how to act, who to be, what to think, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Those are the people we wanted to work with because I knew that this program could actually help them and shift their brain patterns if they just went through it. The program yeah. was developed by Diego Navarro. And I have to give him a lot of credit. And it's called the ACE program, right? Yep. Yeah. 
So he would take these college students and put them through this four week and then another four week program. And then there were the grades went up and all this kind of thing. Now, I happen to be a landmark um, forum mm -hmm. town leader, so I've done a lot of work in transformation. But this was a chance to work with young people, young minds who were going to enter the workforce or become entrepreneurs and really to get them grounded in what it would really take to motivate themselves rather than having somebody else motivate them. So we were developing leaders of themselves so that they could now be leaders of the people. Make sense? Yes, I do understand that. So, I mean, I think about, you know, me even as a kid growing up and going to school and how to get motivated to get homework done. And I was the kind of person who would try to get the homework done while in school if there was downtime. So I would have free time. And I noticed my son has the same thing as me. I don't think my daughter ever did. <laughs> I love her. I love you, Mal. But um, it was kind of like, I want to get home. I'll just do it. Like, you know, kind of thing. But how to motivate yourself is very important. Um so yeah, it makes it a little harder, you know. I'm trying to understand that aspect because I've never been there for to hear other people to give you that push and say, well, this is what you should be doing. Maybe in relationships, that's where I hear it, you know, just over talking. Well, you should take it this way or that way, you know. And I think in business too, that could be a little, you know, people will look at it and go, well, why, you didn't think of this and this, or maybe if you add this to your services and blah, 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 bring more revenue in for you. So it's just kind of taking those aspects in, but you know, where the division comes with setting your mind aside, that's kind of divided everywhere, right? How you think of your health, how you think of your business you're doing, like, even love relationships and stuff like that. So um, if you can set your mind to, you can do anything, right? Absolutely. Easier said than done. <laughs> yes. Right? I um, will be in love forever. Ever, <laughs> yes, yes. Until you're like, what? You did what? <laughs> what just you happened know? here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and the ability to pivot is really critical, particularly now. Mm -hmm. You have to be intrinsically be able to see the avalanche of it and move out of the way before it can get hit. Very true. That's very, very true. So, yeah. And what about the people who there is an avalanche coming later, but you just hold off and pretend it's not coming, right? right. I don't know. I'm reading too much into this, but oh well. <laughs> No, until uh, uh, it's called wisdom, I guess. Maybe that comes with maturity, but yeah. It, um, but it's an awareness. You have to be constantly be aware. Yes, and you always have to set good boundaries up and know what you're bringing into. And you know, I finally believe in all this. What energy you're bringing into your life, because that will also detect the friends that you make and who can read who too, because we're all here, you know, from, for me, it's like, God, yes, we're here, we're human, but we will go out and meet new people all the time. So it's just depending like how they see us and, you know, what our strong points are and everything. But it's also, you know, going from hope and feeling hopeless. It's like, what kind of person are you? So, I mean, can you define anything about that? Yeah. 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 There's, there's a lot of people when they get knocked down. And we've all we've all got knocked down. You know, yes. I, our lives for a while, but you know, had to work my way back up. So mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, when relationships go down, like divorce or something, I mean, we would hope people would make that effort because when two people do fall in love, they fall in love for the right reasons hopefully. So, I mean, <laughs> but, you know, if they make the decision to get married and unite, you know, that's great. But also it's so easy for them to say in today's world, you know, what? Well, things aren't going my way. I'm just going to go. Let's get a divorce, you know? And I, 
I wish it was kind of like, I have to say back in the olden days where you don't just run as quickly. You need to put the, this is good advice for me. My goodness. Okay. I'm just realizing that right now, but put the brakes on, you know, communication is really important. Sit down with that person. Like I mentioned, you know, sit down, talk about where you are in life, you know, how can they work together as a team? One thing I always coached to, to people was if you meet somebody just because your boyfriend or girlfriend or get married, treat every day, you know, or date, if you go on one, still have first dates. Like if you're still together, like there's that spark. Um, there was a movie Reese Witherspoon and maybe Vince Vaughn were in it. I call yeah. it a Christmas movie. I forgot the name, but they were pretending to be totally different people. And I thought that was so cool because they're like, hi, I'm da, 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 da. And it's a different name. And they were just meeting each other, but they were really married, you know, but it gave that spark. And I think there are companies out there that can help reunite that spark and yeah. you do little pamphlets and read yeah. on stuff like that. So that's always fun. I, I, I and just, I love what you're saying, um, to maybe if I'm going to take it back a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. You have to spend time with you before you connect with somebody else if you really want to be in love with them. And I always say, this is my favorite saying, look at the root before you buy the fruit. Yeah, I like that. Go back and really look at the person not with stars in your eyes and my stepmother used to say what you see by broad daylight don't look for my candlestick a duck is really a duck it is not going to become a swan i like that yeah and then decide what can i live with and what can't i live with so you want to begin to do the work on yourself not to be so picky you now that you're going to rule out everybody and, and nobody's going to be good to you because of that some people like that too. Oh, no. Well, they have one thing off, oh, but oh, I can't live with that. I said, well, you know, consider. Consider. Yeah, consider it. With you, right? It's, you know. I don't know. Keep an open mind is what comes to my mind. I mean, if somebody you meet every checkbox that you may have when dating and getting to know them and stuff if there's just one thing you know I don't know for me it's like have I made a mistake in life because I try to understand that and go okay we can work on it together but for me in some of my cases relationships have backfired because of that one thing so it's very important to have that in mind you know and move forward in everything in life and go forward so um but also to keep in mind that you will i'm sorry <laughs> i'm like here switching over um you will be able to move forward and focus on the now and don't look at the past as much Yes. So I, I, I think, you know, for me, I went through another spiritual journey. I just lost my best friend mm -hmm. in the world and it's been hard because I can't talk to her every day, but I had to learn about acceptance and I had to learn about the importance of who I am and self-love as a person to be able to take that next step and actually go on a date and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't want to be judged. That's the other thing. Is there a switch in the neurons on that? You know, how do you switch that on and off? How do you change your mindset when dating and knowing who you are as a person and what you've done wrong, maybe in the past? How do you change that over? Number one, you got to forgive yourself all of that. Maybe. Yes. Yes. I have like people, you know, write letters of forgiveness to themselves and just get rid of them because forgiveness is a huge part of your healing. That's for you, it's not for the other person. Mm -hmm. And you got to let all that stuff go because just imagine being in a relationship is like going on a trip, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be, and you've gone trip after trip after trip. That's, you know, you've been dating and dating. dating. Yeah. Along the way, you keep putting stuff in your suitcase, right? Yeah? Yep. It's called your baggage, yes? Yes, it is called right. baggage. Yes. 
Before you even move into the next relationship, unpack your bags. Yeah. Because if you don't unpack your bags, there's no room to put yeah. something new in. So get those bags unpacked. Do the work on you. Look, this wasn't the best choice. He yeah. was, he was drunk. He looked good. He was sexy. He was hot. Yeah. <laughs> but not the best choice, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not about yeah, that all the know, time. It's about what's in the heart. What's <laughs> in the heart, right? And you only know that I, from how I survived, really. Um, I became best friends. Yes. You become friends with your um significant other or spouse. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. It makes a huge because you're operating now from a a platform of um trust and you know love but not just love sexual not that kind of love it's like mm -hmm. love, unconditional like you're my best friend yeah definitely. Right? I, I will love you through whatever you do and you will love me through it because we understand each other from a different perspective mm -hmm. so I become friends with the person first yes before right. you even jump just become friends yeah. Get to know their I'm sorry, let me go back. Get to know their roots as well. I cannot emphasize that enough. Get to root, know the yeah. root too. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. Like for example, look at how um as a man he would treat his mom. Yes, yes. He treat women. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How he talks to his buddies about women. How do you do that, though? It's like, hey, I want you to go with your guy friends and just be a fly on the wall and listen. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> it flip. Yeah, yeah. Like you go out you're drinking, you know, and you, you know, you're hanging out with everybody. Yeah, yeah. Just listen to the comments. Just listen. Don't you, I know. Don't say anything. Just take in what they're talking about. And yeah. then, you know, it's that's a great advice you know get to know the roots and then you know where it grows from too is very important so because they always say the boys are closest to their moms as they're growing up so that's something to definitely always consider if you're out there dating in the world for anybody it's not just i mean for guys they need to look at the girl how close is she, you know with her dad i'm daddy's girl i'll tell you that but you know also, I want people to see how I interact with my mother, too. Yeah. I love my mom. I love her. But, you know, we don't see eye to eye all the time. Right. But I still love her. <laughs> so, so but, people that yeah. without, without fathers as well. Yes. There's other who, have, who have, don't have a father figure in their life. Yeah, I know. That's hard for kids growing up without their father yeah that touches my heart very much so so it's hard and you know if you're out there and you're a single parent also dating there's a whole different lineup because you need to make sure that this person is a really good person are they going to look at your child when they meet the child the same way and understand that us parents are going to protect our kids no matter what, you know, and then we have to hear from our kiddos, how do you feel about this person? So I remember back in the day, I would hear, uh-uh, no, no, no. And I was like, oh my gosh, kids can be always right. And there was one time I was like, no, they're wrong because they say no to everybody. <laughs> I was like, mom's just never going to be able to go out or meet anybody. So I make it a point to have important conversations with my kiddo because unfortunately his dad is not in his life, you know, but if I decide to go on a date, I have to make sure that my kids are okay with it. Like it doesn't take away mom's son time. It is just something that I am here in this world. This is how I saw my life wanting to grow up. These are the choices I want to make. And you're very much involved. You know, I wanted to be 
for me, like I'm just talking, maybe other people feel the same way too. And I'm sure they do, but you want that connection to build upon as kind of like a family unit too, if they're willing to, you know, do yeah. the fun things, you know, Christmas time, go to the Gaylord, go see the ice show, go see lights together, you know, have those traditions, build those memories, take those pictures and everything. So yeah. it's, it's our journey. We have to do that. Right. <laughs> It is. And, you know, time. Give yourself time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time you is know, very important. Get, get past the cabbage patch or the rose patch. It's the first mm -hmm. six months. The cabbage patch. I haven't heard cabbage patch in a long time. <laughs> don't, don't make decisions on the first six months unless you really am sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if you have children, that brings a whole other dynamic. Oh, it does. It does for a lot of parents. Yep. Um, I I do a lot of work in the co-parenting world. And okay. So, um, you know, find I help couples move on to their singlehood. Mm hmm Singlehood with appendages. Yeah. And what does that look like for them? Um, and where do they want to put their focus? It's like let them find someone again. You know. Just help them to work through all of those things yeah. that are them, including uh, I just come back to forgiveness for making the choice you made. Right? It looked like a good choice at that time, mm -hmm. but it turned out to be not so good. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm finding more and more in the research I'm doing that the break happens after the child comes. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. So, right. yeah. It's not solid before. Mm -hmm. I say, oh, I want it, I want it, I want it. Oh, yes, we're going to have this beautiful baby. Yes. But, and then the person, it's because it's never a child, right? Yeah. Or was a person. You think it's oh, baby. You no, know, it is a person who's come to live with you for the next 18 years. That's yes. Around that. Okay. <laughs> Yes, you got to wrap your head really around that. So, you know, and I, hey, I got to say, you know, with our economy now, you, you might see your kids more often. Yes. <laughs> and they come back after college. And they come back, they really do. <laughs> so it's, do I really, we were really fortunate that the person who came to live with us, um, mm -hmm. or son, we really liked him as a person. And he liked us as people. So mm -hmm. it worked, no matter what our foibles were, he liked us and we liked him. And that was a great, great relationship. It was just so much fun. It's not often like that because you don't know what's coming through. Yeah, right? definitely. You don't know, you know what the universe is giving you to deal with. But mm -hmm. they're always here to teach you a lesson, not for them. Not yeah, them. exactly. Exactly. So, but all these lessons in life, they, they come, they teach us, we learn, we grow as individuals and we take that knowledge and we move forward. So I got to say, hold your head high. If you feel yeah. confident, like if you can say, I'm ready to put myself out in the world and see what I get back mm -hmm. for me, I know I started going back to church and that's really helped me too, oh, wow. okay. which is nice. So, but having that confidence again, to be able to go out there and go, this is the real me, whether you're going to like it or not, it is a little fearful because you just don't know, you know, what you're going to get from it. But having the strength to go out there and do that is so important in life. Yeah. So, so I want the courage. Yes, it's all about courage. Right. So um, go ahead. <laughs> and faith. Courage and faith. Courage and faith. I like that. Yeah. That's how, you know, as a football mom, I, I was like on the field today seeing all the kids play. And I'm like, it's about faith. Having the courage to go out there, go tackle them, go get that ball. You may be losing by what like two points but you still have a chance don't let that energy wear you down and stuff you make it happen if you want it you're going to go after it a friend told me so but um uh, definitely i wanted to talk about this beautiful colorful book right next to you <laughs> can you tell us about your book 
Oh, the Ardor and Zodiacs. Yeah, this, I don't know if you can see it here. Yes, I can. Yeah, okay. So That's this, gorgeous. It's a compilation of like 20, 20 letters from around the world. It's uh -huh. the poems. And the poems represent the essence of the woman. Like where are they from? What gave them their yeah and their courage, right? And then what gave them their resilience? Like where did they learn that from? And then the stories are um women and leaders, but the leaders of their families, leaders of their tribes, leaders of themselves. Yeah. Right? Like what had them become the leaders that they were and how did they accomplish so much? But mm -hmm. Accomplish amazing things in a time when women weren't supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah. Then there's a more modern woman who was um, found their purpose and then went after it. Mm -hmm. so all about that. And then we have a Facebook group that when they read the book, they can actually join and interact with the penises. And oh. uh, yeah, so it's all QR coded in the book. And we have an exercise that we do with um, anyone who's interested. As a matter of fact, I'm putting two focus groups together uh, coming up very shortly here for people, anyone who wants to learn how to reinvent themselves and be resilient, particularly in their relationship, right? Yeah. I don't know, um, maybe. There seems to be a lot of gray divorces now. You know what I mean by gray divorces? Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm like, uh-uh. For 25 years or 30 years, and then they decided, well, we're not going to be married anymore. Or we need a new lease on life, and things are really happening in the unit that they, you know, they are able to overcome. Mm -hmm. Or that so much as people, they don't even recognize each other anymore. The kids are in the house. Empty nesters, you're going through menopause. All of these issues are coming up with people. Or you suddenly realize, hmm, what on earth was I thinking? You know, for that? <laughs> or, or, or it's like, I don't understand women at all. <laughs> at all. I thought I did, but I, don't, I have no clue what she's thinking. Right? <laughs> it goes both ways for men and women. Right. I'm sure guys have a lot to say. But yeah. So I'm running a lot for women and one for men. And uh, you know, if there's anybody out here listening, this <laughs> group is absolutely love to have you. You don't you can get in touch with me because yes. we, want to, we want to be able to help you. Yes, definitely. That's so. the questions that you've been having about whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And it's wide open. We talk about everything. I mean everything. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's so cool. And, you know, I can definitely post when you have your focus study group. You can yeah. put it on our Facebook, you know, social media for Keep Hope. I'm sure a lot of people will go there and check it out. I'll share it too to get more people and stuff. So, but definitely, um, I wanted to kind of touch base. I There's so much that you have done, you know, you've been through the World Leaders, Volume 2, you know, I don't even know what Phoenix Rising is. is that the name of the... Yeah, the Phoenix, the Phoenix is the Phoenix bird. That, uh, well, okay, bird. <laughs> it's a bird. Okay. It's into the flames, but when it comes back out, it's brand new. Oh, and okay. That's what this is all about, really. It's being able to go into the flames and emerge. Reinvent okay. itself and rise again. Okay. Nice. Okay, that's really cool. So, yeah. well, how do people find you on the social media? I know I'm going to post your links as well, but if they wanted to get a copy of your book or follow you, where would they go? The book is on Amazon. Amazon? Right? Okay. Amazon, yep. And it's called The Art of Resilience Phoenixes Rising, right? And you can look for the bird. That's okay. how so many um, <laughs> Art of Resilience books. Yeah. This one, this one here, you it's a colorful bird that you want to, to look for. Well, it is a colorful bird. It's really cool. I mean, all the different colors you have, the red, the yellows, the blues and stuff. So 
Yes, this was done by, uh, the cover was done by an uh, artist called Thea Lightburn, and she designed it especially for um, for the book. Uh, on LinkedIn, I am on LinkedIn. Okay. I'm Dr. Joy Vaughn. Okay. Right. And LinkedIn is the best place to get me. I am on, my website is called drjoycoaching.com. Dot com. And okay. I'm two of us. Okay. Mine is nice. Dr. Joy's coaching dot com. Yes. yes. Perfect. Dot com. And you'll see me look at me in a green dress. And that's how you know. That's how you know who I am. Okay. On Facebook. Um, under Joy Bond. So there's lots of ways to get over me. And I am gonna give you guys a special uh telephone number that you can actually call me directly. And it's seven eight six. Two five six 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 four, and then uh, guess what, Nadine? What? <laughs> uh, guess what? Just for anybody listening to uh, to this podcast today, I am offering a free strategy session. Wow! Yay! Me, right? And uh, I'll send you. I'll send you the calendar link so they can book it. Okay, perfect. And I'll get a free download of my book, How to Be Zeroless. Nice. Well, thank you. I know our guests would love that, definitely. So I want that book, How to Be Fearless. That sounds awesome. <laughs> so, something else, but um, again, I'm really looking for a select group of people. Yes, good. The focus group. And I think it's going to be so much fun. I've done it before. It's going mm -hmm. to be awesome. <laughs> it's Dr. Pepper. I always have to show what I'm drinking. So <laughs> I'm Dr. Pepper. I'm advertising Dr. Pepper today. There you go. <laughs> so, um, well, definitely. I, you know, it was fabulous talking to you and learning more about you and then seeing the different insights too. And you really did, you know, we touched base with some of those questions about relationships and divorces and, you know, how to overcome some of that. And really it takes you, the listener, if you're going through this to have your heart, to be open to, you know, keep an open mind and go after what you want in life, but also have your boundaries set, know what you want and, you know, don't be scared to tell somebody, I hate sushi. If you hate sushi, you hate sushi. Let them know, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, if you are going to put on a mask and be this whole person you're not, it's, you need to be real to find real love because they're going to fall in love with real you no matter what. So, yeah. And that's very important in life. So, but I just wanted to kind of go over um, our sponsors for Keep Hope Alive too. And I love you, girl. I appreciate everything you did today. So, of, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so our first one is, of course, lifeonrecord.com. So if you need that interactive guest book that could be burned on the record or the little box, definitely check them out. Plans only start at $99 daughter, daughters, dollars. You see, I told you there was bloopers here. <laughs> so um, also we have Bridal Shows Inc. So if you are looking to get married or throw a big special event, if the bridal shows are out there, go to them. Every vendor does this and they'll put out their information Learn who your vendors are. So you can see them at bridalshowsinc.com. Miles and Smiles. Love her. DebraRose.com. She is, I think they call it a profile reader, but a psychic. But she does the handwriting analysis, the lipstick. You know what? She's accurate. She's so good. But she makes all events a lot of fun. So Brings me to Party Time Texas. <laughs> you can go there um, at partytimetexas.com. They have everything from DJs, bands, caterers, venues, photographers, videographers. We even, we, now you know where I work. So we even have, <laughs> we have like, if you need the jugglers, the fire breathers, the belly dancers, everything. So 
We got it. We can help you plan that event. Our last one is Bryce Harney Magic. He's been on a couple of the news channels lately, but he is a uh, mentalist and also a magician and is really, really, really good. So he is one of our sponsors as well. So I want to tell you so much, Dr. Joy. I really appreciate it having you on today's show. We're going to have to bring you back and see how all those, you know, different things as and focus groups went for you too so <laughs> yes, yes. Well, yeah thank you so much for having me on this has been a lot of fun yay <laughs> connected via facebook right this is like so cool yeah. yes yes so go to your facebook i'll put those links there too you can find this podcast on anywhere that you find your podcast we do have a facebook group a tiktok and instagram everything i'm trying really hard on tiktok to do a good job so <laughs> i i think it's good for the younger generation but i'm gonna have fun with it you know like i'm Let's 20 see. all of a sudden <laughs> Let's see how that works out <laughs> you never know who's listening oh, who's i know listening. i know right but oh. you know what the one thing I always say at the end of the show, it's about love and light. And we love you guys. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being on. And we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye.